guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we're gonna be looking at rotos he has been in the game since forever he's an absolute beast in the arena he's always been in the top five of the arena meta and um, even with mythicals he's still still so strong so yeah if you get him big congrats definitely worth investing in um for the build the build is very important this champion with AoE champions, you can sort of get away with mediocre builds, but Rotos, he needs a lot of gear to be god tier. Um, otherwise, he just sucks. He sucks so hard. So yeah, it's quite it's quite funny. Like even though he's one of the strongest, if you do not build him right, he will suck. Um, so for the build, like the core is going to be lethal. You always need ignore defense on him. So instinct, savage, lethal, merciless. You need that as your core. Um, obviously, Merciless being the hardest again, it's going to take us ages to farm um, Amos. Like, you know, I've done him, I think he's been out for six months now, and I still don't have, and like, you know, I clear hard and normal every single month. And I still don't have a good enough um, gear set of Merciless for Rotos just yet. Um, offset, you can go speed, crit damage, um, and crawl. They would be the best off pieces to have. But um, speed is still really good on him and is also very, very important. So substats, we're looking for crit rate, we're looking for speed, we're looking for crit damage and attack percentage, and then we're looking for HP percentage. Uh, of course, the gloves, we've got crit damage, attack percentage on the chest, um, attack percentage on the boots, um, and you can see like we've got um, fully ascended as well on the, on the main pieces, uh, HP on the ring, very very nice piece a double roll in hp single roll in attack crit damage on the amulet with a double roll in attack as well very nice and then a hp banner with speed and crit rate and hp as well so rolls in all the right places um so rotos is a stat hungry monster almost every single stat on him will benefit him it's crazy he's so good so um, HP, you want a minimum of 50k. Um, basically, because of his passive, the more HP he has, the better survivability he has as Arena Nuka. So he is an Arena Nuka, so you need to remember that. Um, so yeah, 50 k, 53k HP, uh, 6.4k attack. It's a little bit on the low side, to be honest. Would love that to be more like 7, 7.5. But remember, he's not an empowered... This is a free-to-play Rotos. It's not an empowered Rotos. My undead faction isn't filled out just yet either. So we're missing a little bit of speed as well. Uh, 3k on the defense as well. Again, defense is good on Rotos. Defense will help him stay alive. 232 um, speed. I'd say the minimum is 230. He needs to be fast. Because he's a single attack champion, um, you know, he needs to get the rounds and he needs to be killing people every single round. And to do that, he needs to be fast so he can just keep cycling around. 100% uh, crit rate, 324 crit damage. Again, that could be a lot higher. Like my my, this is just the sort of I'd say the bare minimum that you can get away with Rotos. You see other people with like crazy stats. Like I think I've seen 9k attack Rotos with like 50k HP and like 250 speed. Uh, it's crazy what some of the Krakens can do. Um, resistance, resistance is also good on Rotos. Back in the day, there used to be a resistance Rotos meta where you'd have like 400 resistance. I think that's kind of dead now. Um, with how um, Awakening works and stuff, it's just it's just not worth it. Accuracy is also good on him as well because of his A1. He can land a decreased defense. I would say, though, for Arena, you don't want Accuracy because you don't want to get sheeped. Um, but it is still, it's still good on him. It can't be helped. So let's talk about Blessing. So I think Warden of the Fallen is the best. Um, just gives him way better survivability, works great with his passive. However, you could also go for Polymorph as well. Even though Polymorph is kind of getting a nerf, it's still going to be very, very strong and it's still going to be a very, very good option for Rotos. Um, you definitely don't want to take Soul Reap. Your Rotos should be strong enough to just get kills every single turn. So it kind of makes Soul Reap redundant. Um, Life Harvest is actually also a good option as well. But you'd usually stick that on like a reviver or a support champion. 
but you could still stick it on Rarius if you want to. And you need to have a minimum of four stars. Four star awakening just is a real game changer just to get that extra, um, or the HP don't matter, but the, that extra 38% crit damage is a game changer for Rose. It's it's an absolute must. So it's passive. Uh, we, I think we'll ignore the Sifi stuff. Most people probably aren't going to have Sifi. And also a lot of the stuff that Rose does, um, it, it's more in Sifi's kit. If you look at Sifi's kit, it will explain what the pairing does with Rotos. So his A, no, sorry, his passive will decrease damage from enemies' hits. So incoming damage um, from a single hit cannot exceed 50% of this champion's max HP, grants an extra turn if this damage reduction occurs. So he's constantly going to be popping off. And this is what makes him really tanky and gives him great survivability. Um, it, you know, there are counts to this, like any double hitter, like Trunda, Hepfrak, anyone that can do like a double hit will kill Rares if, if it goes above that 50%. His A3 is on a three turn cooldown. Attacks one enemy will ignore 60% of the target's defense. So that's on top of what we're already doing. It's also going to ignore unkillable and block damage as well. Um, so good. It's so, it's just insane what you can do with this guy. Um, enemies killed by skill cannot be revived if you gain the maximum amount of HP from his A2. And if you kill someone, you also get an extra turn. Just to point out as well, on every single skill, he gets um, attack is like your first multiplier and the HP is your secondary. Um, so having attack and HP benefits him. So that's why we've got sort of a, a, hybrid, a hybrid build on him. One for um, survivability, but two, the HP is going to help us with that damage as well. So it's A2. Attack one enemy destroys 20% of their max HP, then adds HP onto this champion's own max HP. Uh, cannot destroy a champion's max HP by more than 60% in one battle. Cannot increase this champion's max HP more than 60k. Um, and for bosses, it's 30%. And it can only increase our HP by 15%. Oh, sorry, 15k. Not it's on a two turn, two turn cooldown as well, which is pretty crazy. Um, but it's not really that important. Um, I guess the most important thing about this is that you know the the the, the boss damage isn't important. But um, yeah, but the getting that 60k HP, so you have to get 60k HP for us to be able to get that uh, to get the um, block revive. So you you know you're gonna have to do this three times to sort of get that, which isn't terrible. It's going to take you probably about a minute, minute and a half to build up. But once you've reached that point, it just makes Rose so much stronger. And, you know, if they've got a revive on their team, it doesn't matter. Goodbye. Someone's getting killed. His A1 um, attacked one enemy has a 75% chance of placing decreased defense for two turns and also has 25% chance of grinding an extra turn. So, you know, three turn cooldown, two turn cooldown, and also three turn cooldown. But if you get the kill, that's really a two turn cooldown. And then you've got a, an ex a good chance of getting the extra turn on the A1. I mean, I've had it so many times where I've come up against a Rotos and they've literally had four turns in a row off the A1 and just literally just stripped my Hepfrak off his, of his stone skin. Insane. So, Masteries. Um, interesting build um so we've gone into the defense tree making sure we get retribution and deterrence to try and get those counter attacks uh, a sort of like a typical offense tree going into helm smasher trying to get as much damage on the left hand side as possible um, i think ambush is really good because he's a single target attack champion uh ruthless ambush is going to work every single time the other option as well is whirlwind of death they're they're as good as each other to be honest um, I really couldn't say which one's better than the other. They're, I think, you know, in certain situations, well, wouldn't be better. In other situations, Ambush is going to be better. I think I just prefer Ambush, though, because you just want to make sure you do uh, kill that champion. And Opportunist as well. So if you're bringing any sort of CC on the team, that is going to bump up your damage as well. But yeah, that's a pretty pretty standard build for Rotos. Um, you know, he's not just great for Arena. This is a specific Arena build. Also good against uh, the Griffin, uh, Scarab in Doom Tower as well. Um, he can actually solo Scarab if you build him in a lifesteal set. The only thing with that though is that 
life still is still actually pretty good for arena as well but i prefer him just to be an absolute beast and just go for that max damage anyway let's just uh let's go into the arena and put him to work i'll show you what sort of teams you should build around uh rotus as well so saturday um we're in goal two for um tag arena it's time to sort of start pushing up a little bit and rotus is a great counter to Necred, so let's take this team on. So with Rotus, I feel like it's essential to have a turn meter boost champion like Arbiter, like Cephi. Um, you know, he needs to be fast, so he needs to be getting turns. So Arbiter pairs up really nicely with him. I love Armands just for that control, and he's just such a good counter for Necred. So what we can do is we can just oh, we got very unlucky there with um with Xena. So luckily, um Gizmark, you know. No, Gizmark? Gizmak. Um, you know, obviously Mythical, I was very lucky to pull him. But the problem is now we need to try and take out... Um, well, we don't want to lose. So what's great about him, though, is that he can bring that ally protection. Ally protection is great for Rotos. The only problem here is obviously Ulmer Death Knight is a great counter to Rotos. But if you're bringing in, um, you know, you need... You need Either you need control or you need protection around him. He does need that protection. But uh, you can see, like, we've already done some crazy damage to Oma oh, Death Knight. I feel like that is coming kind of from Gizmark, to be fair. And to be fair, well, it looks like, to be fair, we're sort of meant to be showcasing Rotos, and it looks like Gizmark's actually going to be the hero here. Can we get the sheep? Yep. And with Rotos, what we're going to do is we are going to heal up. We're going to push back that turn meter. And hopefully we don't proc fear. Oh, yeah, of course. I'm a death knight, of course. Always pushing it back. And we've got that extra turn. Nice. And I keep trying to steal from from I'm a death knight, but he's not having it. But yeah, this this is pretty much game over. Do some big damage on my Death Knight. Look at that, seventy three k on on my Death Knight. Insane. All right, team number two. So a Narcissus team. Obviously, he's a beast. So so strong. I actually missed out on him. So glad. Make sure you save your shards, boys. Um. So again, we need that Arb. We are bringing in some uh, block debuffs to protect us from. Uh, Tormund. So yeah, bring that block uh cleanse, block debuffs. So we're gonna try and take out Narcissus first. There we go, easy pickings, and then we'll go with the A2. Let's go for Tormund. So you can open with the A2 or the A3. It depends on the team. If I really want to make sure that I'm killing someone, I'm using the A3. If I had like a tankier team, then I might open with the A2. Um, this is. A slight problem with Rotus though, that because he gets so many turns, you can see he's now not getting the uh, block debuff protection and that block damage as well. So gonna focus Narcissus with um, Helicat. It's kind of weird. Like I feel like Helicat sort of dropped off the meta a little bit. Still an insane um, champion, a real beast. Oh, see, he just slaps. Even with Rotus, he almost killed us Rotus. But that's why we have to make sure that we take Warden of the Fallen. So definitely want to make sure we get a, a revive. Revive it. No turn meter boost. Oh, I, was, I just saw that coming. I was like, oh, don't land the continuous heal on Rose. So actually, we've killed Narcissus. Nice. So let's have a turn meter boost. And then we got going to cleanse with Elva. And let's try and take out uh, Ancora. Ooh, nowhere near enough damage there. She must be very, very tanky. So again, a little bit of focus on Narcissus. Let's pull it on that block damage. Yep. I had a feeling his, uh, his big hit was coming in. But we're all good. We still got protection with our block debuffs so a1 on rose 
109k. What you saying? What a beast. Insane. All right, so let's try and. Yeah, we'll do the Termia boost. We should be good. So I'm actually going to use the A2 of Rose this time. So now we should be at max HP. And the next time he comes back, we will give him the old block revive. It's not easy to do. It's kind of hard to sell up. It, I do feel like it's a bit of a shame that they did nerf Rota so hard. Um, I guess you can kind of understand it as well at the same time because he was broken. No, it doesn't look like we've reached it just yet. We must have max HP right now. I don't know if there's a way that you can sort of see. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think there is. There is no way to really check to see if you've done it or not. Okay, turn me your boost because there's no Tormund. And oh, that was a nice big hit. Remember, free to play Rayos, not empowered or anything. And that's it. Sit down. Wow. Uh, you know, Narcissus, like I said, he is so hard to beat. And we beat him pretty comfortably with Rayos. This is a pretty slow, tanky team. Again, another Ulmer Death Knight. You know, he's so popular in the meta right now, and he is a pain. So what we'll do is we'll push everyone to meter back. I did bring in Gizmark again because he is so good for when it comes to stripping that stone skin. So we're just going to do one activation. There we go. Stone skin. What stone skin? So let's open up with the A2. Oh, yeah, <laughs> of course. All right, there goes on with Death Knight. And, of course... Duchess is probably going to revive straight away. And Arbor is already dead. So hopefully it's not going to be too much of an issue. And Duchess is down. Going to have to take out Mithrala. And this is going to be a pretty comfortable win for us. Um, you know, obviously, again, it does come to having the right champions built around us. But Rotos is definitely getting work done and doing that damage that we need. Four goes on the on the A1. Sick. What can I say, boys? What can I say? All right, so I think this is going to be the last one. So we don't have turn meter control. So we've had to bring in some form of control with Hedgy. So we've got CC Hedgy. Otherwise, you know, it's just going to stuck. I'm going to bring in some um, or stripper with Romantu. So you're just locking out some passives as well. But it's a little this is gonna be this is gonna be a hard fight. A very, very tanky team. I'm think I'm gonna take out Ancora first. Oh yeah, Roto oh oh my death knight always catching me off guard. It's so annoying. Okay, just focusing Ancora for now. You know hopefully you know Wukong will stay down for at least two rounds. And again, it's just going to hit on my death knight. Wait, you know, just putting his skills on cooldown. I'm going to go with that AoE revive. And on my death knight should be coming off any time now. A little bit of a problem though. Yeah, those fears, the decrease attack, it is an issue. <laughs> and Rotus is down. This oh, it doesn't look like it's going to be a win, guys. If we could only get... Oh, okay, that's it. It's game over. Yeah, oh, that, oh, it's just everywhere. Everyone's using Ultimate Death Knight. So I guess that is the thing about Rose is that, you know, he's not bulletproof. There are definitely counts to him. Um, Ultimate Death Knight being one. Harima is also a really good one. But that doesn't stop him from still being a beast and, you know, the better support champions that I've, I've already got like, I'd say like a mid tier sort of a uh, roster for, for support champions. You got all those top tier void legendaries and mythical champions. He just becomes a real game changer. But anyway, that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe and I'll see you all in the video soon. Peace.